Welcome, I'm Kinetic Symphony, this is Dave. I hunt down and report on weird and true mysterious stories, from glitches to the supernatural. Case file number 1893, written by Rad Carrot. From joy to dread, death seemed ahead. My friend and I were talking about going to a pool hall to watch wrestling on TV. We didn't have the channels on our dorm TV, and it was on late at night, UK. We were sober, pretty happily chatting away to each other, having a nice time. But the moment we stepped outside, there's this horrible feeling of dread. It's like a crushing feeling of despair. Makes the air feel really cold. I mean, it was cold anyway, but in a different way. A bit suffocating. The conversation dries up immediately as we walk down the street. But it takes a minute of us walking in silence for me to say to my mate, Air's a bit thick tonight, isn't it? He looks at me, wide-eyed, and says, You feel it too? He was a spiritualist, not something I believe in, but to each their own. And he remarks how it feels like death and how it's close. Not what you want to hear at 2am on a cold February morning in the middle of a city. But the moment passes. We get to the pool hall, go inside and forget it happened. Until a few days later. I'm walking back to the halls and dorms and there's a police cordon by an abandoned building. The one me and my friend walked past that night. I ask around when I get back and apparently a few homeless people froze to death in the building and have likely been dead for a few days. Could just be paranoia or something, but still makes me think several years later. Second story is less tangible, but I remember it provoked worse feelings. Basically, I was holidaying in Central Europe with my friends. We weren't in a particularly bad area. It was a place by a large lake. Hostels and resorts and all the sorts. So was touristy. We go walking outside of the main town, looking for somewhere nice to eat. We end up in this strange suburb, a bit lost. While we're walking, the feeling that I had that night, at the university, gets stronger. I'm with different mates here, so I'm the only one that seems to notice. But the feeling gets worse and worse, to the point where I just wanted to break down and cry. It's tough to describe. But it was that same feeling of despair, like hope had been sucked out of you and nothing would ever be good again. It's a hundred times worse than that night at the university, but I stick with my mates, all of whom are rational and smart blokes. We stop and have a conversation about how we're not going to find a cafe or bar out here, so we may as well turn back. I don't really say anything. My lips are really dry. My stomach is in knots. You know that creepy feeling you get when you think you're being watched? It was only multiplied many times over. The others don't seem to notice anything. Anyway, that's really all it was. We turned around, walked back the way we came, and the feeling gradually subsided. Ended up having a nice night. It might just be some extreme paranoia on my part, but it still makes my hair stand on end when I think of it. Okay, so 1893. From joy to dread, death seemed ahead. I've always wondered about people who have a sensory perception of death. They can feel it in the air around them, a chill, if you will. So it's referencing those people that can perceive when someone passes away. Matter and energy are just vibrations in various fields of reality. What we perceive as matter is just excitations in those fields, at least this is the most accepted theory of reality as we know it right now. So, if you can imagine someone passing away, their vibration is stifled, or at least suppressed. Maybe a tiny fragment le is left over, a tiny ripple in the pond. But compared to what it was before, you could sense the change. That's why it feels cold. What is cold? Cold is the absence of energy, the absence of heat. It's not really a thing, it's just less heat less energy in a given area. So I think that's what you have the ability and your friend too, not all of them, not the second group, but the first one, a spiritualist. <laughs> I 
I really think it's not mysticism. It's just science we don't fully understand yet. The nature of reality or the multiverse that we don't fully understand yet, but that's okay. We can make leaps and assumptions, you know, take it with a grain of salt. But still, I think it makes a compelling case that some people can sense when someone's energy is drained in an area. There's less energy there. I mean, literally, there's less body heat emerging from their body, but it's, it's a bit more than that. What you perceived as a chill in the air, a thickness, wasn't really the absence of body heat. That wouldn't make sense. You'd be way too far away to notice that. But the aura energy from these people was gone. And it was two people in the first case. My guess is the second case where you experienced this as well. Someone did die. You just never went back in the area to confirm and, you know, see a police cordon as well. But I'm pretty sure that's the case. Though, if it hasn't happened again in that long, hmm, makes you wonder. Maybe the ability is limited in range because certainly you've come across people who've died or were about to die within 15 years since then. So yeah, proximity probably is a grand key. This uh, perception doesn't stretch far. Again, my guess. Case file number 1894, written by Long Jumping Day, 2498. Strangeness in the dawn, ribbon wrapped as if never gone. Something absolutely insane happened to me this morning, and I'm hoping someone can help me make sense of it. Today is my son's birthday. I woke up early, around 6 a.m., to sneak downstairs and blow up the balloons, so he'd be surprised when he woke up. To do so, I grabbed the following from my kitchen, the balloons, a pair of scissors, and an open roll of balloon ribbon I'd previously used for my daughter's birthday. This last item is important. I sat on my couch and blew up six balloons, using the scissors to cut the ribbon to tie to the ends. Here's when the insanity happened. After I finished blowing up the seventh balloon, I went to grab the ribbon to tie at the end, just as I had done for the others. Except, when I looked down, the ribbon roll was completely wrapped in plastic, as if it was brand new and had never been opened. The hair on the back of my neck stood up, and I just sat there and stared at it for a few minutes. How could it be wrapped in plastic when I'd literally just been using it and had opened it months before for my daughter's birthday? I couldn't dwell on it this morning, but now that the day has settled down, I cannot stop thinking about it. Case Notes 1894 Strangeness in the Dawn Ribbon Wrapped as if never gone Localized temporal reset of the ribbon that you were using. Like you said, there's no way you could have used it, and you did. It was literally right there, and you had used it for your daughter's birthday too. It's not something you can forget that you did because the evidence was already manifested in reality which you already had done. Whatever mechanism is involved in resetting an item back to its originating state at a given point in time, it's almost like a uh, operating system reset. You can either reformat the operating system which wipes everything or you can simply do a system restore. The system takes a snapshot of where it was at a given point and you can simply restore to that point later on in the future. Basically, it's like that. Every item has a reset point. Now, how far back it goes, I don't know, and who is triggering the reset and for what purpose? Why was it required to do it here? Or is it a malfunction in the process? It sounds more like a malfunction in this case. Case file number 1895, written by Anonymous. Bolts from above, a tale of Chevy love. My dad passed away in 1992. Among other things, I inherited a 1980 Chevy LUV pickup. It may have been through ignorance, but I looked high and low for four bolts that needed replacing on the U-joint. They were special and shouldered. I stopped everywhere looking for these bolts. Neither Chevy nor Isuzu had them. I was at my wit's end, as I had been looking for two months. One day, a buddy of mine and me stopped at a hamburger joint that had a parts store next to it. We got out and I said I was going to check this parts store and I had one of the bolts in my hand. As we were walking to the store, a guy that I can only describe that looked like Jesus, the type that your grandmother had a picture of on her wall, walked by us and said howdy or some crap. 
but here is what freaked me out. He said, those look like they are U-joint bolts for a Chevy LUV pickup. Bet you're having a heck of a time. Yes, he said heck, finding them. Come over here, I think I have some in my truck. He walked over to his truck, looked in a five gallon bucket and handed me four perfect bolts. Exactly like I needed. <laughs> my jaw dropped. I tried to pay him or buy him a hamburger and he said no. Just help someone else out if you get a chance. That was 28 years ago and I remember it like it was yesterday. Caissons fin 1895. Bolts from above. A tale of Chevy love. Well, Jesus back in the day brought people wine, turned water into wine, right? So now, it's bolts to bolts, just a free gift. <laughs> Don't really need walking on water, but no, in reality, this probably was just a coincidence, but a mighty fine one. And I think the guy that looked like Jesus was just a guy who was friendly. But you were probably oriented by your guardian angel, just because you needed the bolts, nothing dramatic or super important, as far as we can tell. We can't see in that projected future. Maybe there is a reason you needed to find these bolts and you had to be guided to the one person in the state that could uh, provide them for you. Now time for the joke of the day. I heard they made the world's strongest suction cup. I'm not quite sure how they pulled it off. <laughs> like the video, subscribe, hit the bell. Kinetic Symphony, signing off.